In the wing line method, you'll use specific entry altitudes and airspeeds based on the lines on the wings that you see in the pictures there. When you use them, they'll help achieve a consistent dive angle, firing speed, and firing range. The basic idea of the wing line method is that as the target touches the wing line, you'll begin a diving turn towards it. In order to judge when to actually release your weapons on the target, you'll start counting when the wing drops to begin that turn. The length of time will depend on the weapon you're using and the altitude you start with. If you're in the P-51D or P-47D and you're selecting rockets, this is the gun sight you'll see in your aircraft unless you take the uh, gyroscopic sight. Its radius is 50.5 mils, and when you're using the rockets and guns, you're going to have 0 mils of lead, but if you're using bombs, you're going to need 6 degrees of lead, which is equal to 107 mils, and I've marked that point on the nose as you can see in the picture. So in order to use these wing lines correctly, we need to reference the P-51D ground attack table. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually pretty simple and there's some common themes throughout the table which we'll look over a little bit later. So just for a basic example, if we use wing line 20, that's 1% of the entry altitude, which is 2000 feet, and the entry airspeed starts at 250 miles per hour. So now if we're going to choose a weapon, so let's say we're going to use the bombs, We'll need to have an approach time of 16 seconds. The amount of lead we need is 106 mils, and our firing range is going to end up being around 1300 feet. Now along with the P-51 skin, there's also a P-47 one with wing lines, which is available for download. So this is the ground attack table that goes along with that if you need it for reference. So for the wing line method in the P-51, you choose your wing line based on what altitude you want to attack at, and then you pick the appropriate airspeed. The time to count on the approach is going to be dependent on the weapon, so for bombs you'll count for 16 seconds, rockets for 14, and guns for 13. The amount of lead you need for bombs, you're going to need to use 6 degrees or 107 mils, as we saw earlier, and the guns and rockets won't require any lead. So it's important to line up the target with a wing line at a long distance while flying straight and level, and then as the target touches the wing, you'll begin a diving turn and start your countdown so at the correct time, you can then fire the desired weapon at the target. One thing to note though is that you can set up the bombs and rockets to fire however you like. So you can drop both bombs at a time or in singles, and the same for the rockets. It's up to you how you want to do it. Alright, so we're going to look at some bombing attacks first. Um, I've set up the bombs to drop as a pair, which you can adjust by using left windows B. And we're also going to use the wing line of 70 on this attack against a bridge further up there on the river. So to know my altitude, I'll just add two zeros, and that's going to be 7,000 feet. And my entry airspeed is going to be 220 miles per hour. And if you get what airspeed to use, just count backwards from wing line 20, beginning at 250 miles per hour in 10 mile an hour increments. So as I'm flying along here, I'm trying to keep that wing line of 70 lined up uh, with the bridge across the river there. So that way, when it touches, I can begin my diving roll and start counting. Um, and since I'm going to be using bombs, the time I'm going to count for is going to be 16 seconds and I'll initiate that countdown when I start the roll. Now I normally do this counting in my head, so I've added a uh, time up to the top corner for reference. Now the wing line touches our attack point, we're going to roll and push over. And we pull back towards the bridge, bit of back pressure, keep the dive coming. The dive itself won't last more than between 8 to 9 seconds. Get our amount of lead on the bridge, and we'll release from the count to 16, and we can pull off. Now your accuracy in this method is going to be dependent on how accurate you can actually count. So you can practice with the stopwatch if you need to. However, you will be able to get to the point where you can release within plus or minus 300 feet of your firing range, and that will help you hit any target. Alright, so here's another example with uh, 5,000 feet this time. So we're at 5,000 feet, entry airspeed is going to be 220 miles an hour. We're going to reach our point, start the roll and begin counting. That back pressure bring ourselves back towards the bridge in our attack. And as we come back towards the bridge, we want to make sure that in the last few seconds we're holding the lead that we need to release the bombs accurately. So we can release and pull off. You see the bombs would have struck the bridge but they passed through for some reason but they still did enough damage to destroy the bridge. Now the last one here is going to be at 2,000 feet, so the entry airspeed here is going to be 250 miles an hour, getting ourselves lined up with the bridge. So I'm not close enough to the bridge with my line, I'm going to end up falling short or dropping long. So as the middle of the bridge we begin our rolling diving turn, 
Start the countdown. So to pull back towards the bridge. Get the amount of lead we need. I'm just going to try and hold it there on the bridge so as we approach that 16 seconds, we can release. Let me pull away. And we can see here, if we look back towards the bridge, we've got another direct hit. So now with uh, those bombing examples complete, we'll have a look at how to attack targets using the rockets. For the rocket attacks, uh, I've set them up to fire in pairs using left windows R. And um, I'm going to line myself up here using the wing line of 50. So I'll be at 5,000 feet with an entry at speed of 230 miles per hour. And there's some barges down there in the water. So once my wing line crosses that, start the roll and dive. Remembering that this dive isn't going to last more than 7 to 9 seconds. And with these rockets, we don't need to use any lead. So we just put the gun sight on the target and we'll fire at 14 seconds. We fire and then we can pull off. So here we can see how the rockets actually struck the target. So I'm it down so we can locate those two rockets. See we've got two direct hits on the barge. Now in a normal recovery uh, you can try and avoid any of the any aircraft fire that will come your way. Uh, but I'm not really going to show that in this video. This is just to show the wing line method of attack. So I'm going to recover up to 3,500 feet to prepare for the next attack using the wing line of 35. And just above that factory complex there, there's a flak battery that I'm going to try and line up the uh, wing line of 35 on. And then we'll begin the attack. Now because I'm at this wing line of 35, we hit 3,500 feet with an entry at speed of 240 miles per hour. I see him shooting at me there, we've got ourselves lined up pretty decently. So we'll begin our diving turn and start counting. Just try and keep this diving turn as smooth as possible so you can finish it within that 7 to 9 seconds. Then get our uh, gun sight on the target. And as we come up to 14 seconds we'll fire the rockets. And we can pull off and have a look at how we hit. When firing the rockets it's important to be coordinated and wings level. Here you can see it wasn't quite level when I shot so it changes the rocket separation when it hits the ground. So now we're going to pull off, and again, um, no real recovery. I'm just going to bring myself up to 2,000 feet, and there's a train uh, back to my uh, left, uh, 7 o'clock, which I'm going to line up on. So as we turn back around here, uh, I'm going to be at 2,000 feet, and for this, the wing line of 20, entry airspeed is going to be 250 miles per hour. So I'm set up there. Now I'm just trying to keep my uh, imaginary line off wing line 20 lined up with that train. That looks pretty good. Now just as the wing line 20 is coming up, start that diving turn and begin our count. Pull back toward the train. Get the gun sight on the train here, and then in 14 seconds we'll fire the rockets. Now in this example my firing range is a little bit closer than what it should have been. And that may have been because I might have pulled a little bit too tight in this initial diving turn. So I ended up having a longer period of time where I'm diving at the target. So if you happen to recognize that you're at the correct firing range before you finish counting, then feel free to fire away. Because the counting is just there to help you get in approximately the right position. See, we've reset. We're going to do some guns attacks. Um, if you do happen to have the rocket tubes left over, then you can jettison them using left shift and D. And that'll cause them to fly off. Doesn't add any extra drag, um, it's just an option you can take to remove them if you want. So for this I've got my convergence set at 500 meters and we're starting off using the wing line of 50. So we're at 5,000 feet with an airspeed of 230 miles per hour. I'm going to line up in a flak position that's just shooting at me down there. And since I'm using the guns in these passes I'm going to be counting for 13 seconds. Then we just wait for the target to come up. He touches it, so we start our roll and the diving turn. As always, this is going to take between 7 and 9 seconds to get ourselves lined up. And this will give us 4 seconds to get the gun sight on the target directly. And we reach the point, fire for 1 to 2 seconds, and then we pull off. Now remember the convergence is at 500 meters, so it's likely that the bullets will cross over before they reach the target. So here we see it doesn't necessarily destroy it, but it's enough to make the gunman run away. 
So like before, I'm not going to do a proper recovery to try and avoid any of this anti-aircraft. No, I'm just going to speed it up by recovering to 3,500 feet. Then we're going to swing it around and then line up on the next target. So since I'll be beginning the attack at 3,500 feet, it'll be using the wing line of 35 with an airspeed of 240 miles per hour initially. So here we'll see there's a couple of uh, flak batteries over there. So we've lined up the 35 wing line on that. Just waiting until it touches. And we'll begin the roll and the diving turn and start the counting. Pull through so we finish at about the 9 second mark. Hold the gun set on the target and fire at 13 seconds, just for a couple of seconds. And then we pull off. So as we start using these lower wing lines, the convergence is going to be less of an issue because our firing range is going to start getting much closer to the target. This means more of our rounds are going to strike and we're going to score some kills. So I'm just going to use the energy gained in that dive. I'm going to climb back up to 3,500 feet and then we're going to speed up the time here and um, swing back around. And then there was another flak position near the previous one so I'm going to make uh, another pass against that using the same method beginning with the wing line of 35. So we roll it out, see how we uh, fare trying to line up the target with the wing line. Looks decent enough. So yeah, we can make our roll and diving turn and start counting. Get ourselves lined up on the target. Fire for a couple of seconds and then we pull off. So again, just like the last time, see a lot of the round striking around there that's uh, managed to destroy the target pretty quickly. So for the last attack, we just skip forward in time, uh, recovered at 2,000 feet and maintaining 250 miles per hour. And there's some um, trucks that are over by the factory area. So I'm lining up the front of the factory because that's approximately where the trucks are. You see the trucks over there, getting that wing line of 20 lined up. Once it touches, we do that roll and the diving turn again. Don't pull too hard, we want to make sure we finish that turn in about 9 seconds. Roll out, hold the gun sight on the target and fire for a couple of seconds. And we destroyed it. And uh, without Raptor Attacker, this video wouldn't have been possible as I didn't have really the time to make either of these skins, so thanks to him he was able to make it based on the data that I gave him. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're able to improve your ground attack techniques. Uh, if it did, be sure to share it with your friends and become a subscriber. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.